Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at ESET Internet Security. We'll be doing a ransomware test, which means we've got our friends over here. As you can see, we've got 56 items. These are the most infamous threats from the last five years. We will be executing these from a network location using our star called Malix, which is an automation tool. We'll do it a couple of ways, as you're probably aware by now. We will try to do one with all the shields turned up, and then we'll try to test what kind of behavioral defenses it has if this was new ransomware for which it didn't have signatures. But more on that later. As you can see, our friends here are really excited to get on the system. They've got two extensions to show for it. Will ESAT be up to the challenge? Oh wait, looks like I ran out of my trial again. When our ransomware is ready to go and our AV product isn't even activated, what hope do we have? But thankfully, that's where our sponsors for this video kick in. So a big thank you to BZ Future for sponsoring this video. They actually sell a lot of AV keys at a really good price. And they reached out to me and said, hey, we can give you a key and sponsor the Peace Security channel. So I'm just going to buy the key right now to show you how the process works. ESET Internet Security, that's what I have installed and that's what I need and we're ready to go. By the way, at the moment, they've got a really cool Easter sale going on. So with whatever AV you buy, you also get a Windows 10 Pro key for absolutely free. Now these are OEM keys, but they're perfect for guess what? Using it on your VM. So if you're tired of looking at those activate Windows watermarks, you know what to do. I'm just gonna go ahead and pay via PayPal. And within minutes, the order is completed so we can grab the key. Now let's see if it solves our problem. So we're gonna say we've already purchased a key. Verifying. And there we go. Now if you check for license validity, as you can see, it's activated until 2021. So now we can carry on with the test as soon as it's finished updating. So for the first part of the test, we're just going to go through all of the ransomware in that folder, automate the execution using our Python tool Malix. Of course, it's in Z shared. So we're not disabling the protection or copying anything over. We're just going to directly run all of this as an attack vector from a network location and see how easy it fares. Looks like we're good to go. So let's get testing. So far so good, proactive detection is at 100% as I would expect for this test. I do expect these to be blocked, keep in mind these are not particularly new threats, so to speak. And we have confirmation, so 100% proactive detection, not awfully surprised, but now we will get to the more interesting part of this test, which is going to be running all of this without the signatures. Basically, we're trying to simulate a situation where we've got sophisticated ransomware that's brand new, that nobody's seen before, that the file guard cannot detect. So in order to do that, we will have to make some changes in the settings. So I'll go into computer protection. So we're gonna turn off real-time fault protection, but we will have HIPS turned on. This includes deep behavioral inspection, which again is something I would hope would block the ransomware. We also have ransomware shield. So again, I'm hoping what's going to happen is that our data is going to be safe. I don't care what the detection ratio is. I don't care if the ransomware is detected. What I expect at the end of this test is for our data to be safe. That is a win condition. I did restore it from snapshot because it did delete a lot of the ransomware, but now we're back all 56 strong. So as I explained, we have turned off real-time protection. The host intrusion prevention system is still turned on, ransomware shield is still turned on, behavioral inspection is still turned on, and the filtering mode is set to automatic. Looks like we're ready to go, so let's get testing. Looks like a lot of stuff has indeed executed. I'm noticing some ransom notes on the desktop. But the big question here, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be, is our data encrypted? At the moment, it's hard to tell because a lot of this stuff is still active and working. But the initial signs are not too bad because we do have our wallpapers in the shared folder and that seems to be okay, unless it's just explore refreshing at this point. Let's see. Oh no, <laughs> looks like uh, we are encrypted. So our data is not safe. That is a bit disappointing. 
if we take a look at malloc's log, as you can see, we did execute all of our files. At least our test finished successfully, but uh, it looks like a lot of the malware was able to do its bidding and ESET was enabled to keep our data safe. Now we're gonna do one more test. So we're going to make some changes to the HIP settings and we'll see if that actually helps this in any way. So once again, I'm going to restore to snapshot. Looks like we're good to go once again. So I will go ahead and turn off real-time protection, but we will make changes to HIPs this time. So I'm going to go ahead and enable smart mode because it seems to be the only other automatic version of this. So we could make, so we could use interactive mode, but that would probably bombard us with a hundred alerts, which is not really usable. Policy-based mode would probably require setting up some policies to begin with. Let's see what it does. Um, it doesn't say much over here, but I'm guessing we'd have to set up rules. But let's go ahead and try smart mode. And let's see if that's able to make a dent in the ransomware assault that is about to happen. First, of course, we will have to get our ransomware once again. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this back to our folder. This is all on a network location. Now I need to run a script on my system to make sure they're renamed to exc so we can execute them. That's done. And now we're ready to proceed with Malix once again. So we'll go to Z shared and run Malix. Oops, looks like Malix is encrypted too. <laughs> right, so I need to grab my backup copy of Malix. And now we should be good to go. All right, again, a lot of it being missed, but uh, hmm. But do we have similar results? I guess that's what we need to check. Is our data encrypted once again? Some threats are being found in memory, which is good to see. Now it looks like some suspicious behavior was detected. So this is smart mode hips kicking in. I'm going to say deny. So far, so good, actually. I don't think our data is encrypted. Let me check. Oops, <laughs> unfortunately, I doubt if that's going to be the case for long. Um, let me pull up Malik's logs so you can see what actually happened. So if we take a look at this, as you can see, it blocked about 41%, but more concerningly, it looks like our data is getting encrypted. So a lot of it is being blocked actively in memory, as you can tell. But the question is, is that enough? It is detecting some of the exploits. It is blocking a lot of the communication activities with the CNC, but um, that might be in vain if our data is gone. At this point, I'm going to try to reboot the system because nothing is going to respond until I do. Well, if I can even do that, <laughs> looks like that's not gonna happen. So I'll just uh, reset the VM. and we'll see what is the state of our files. At least we're operational as in we're booting up, but if we look at our documents, it's not even recognizable. I mean, this looks like a product key. <laughs> and same for our wallpapers. For some reason, this picture got spared, but nothing else really, but it looks like different ransomware has encrypted us this time. So at least that's a suggestion that some of it got blocked, but overall, this is still not an ideal result because our data got encrypted. HIPS obviously has other modes as well that we could try, but the reason I'm not doing that is because as an average user, you're probably gonna stick with either of these. I don't think you would set up a policy-based mode. What you could do is set up learning mode for a while and then switch to interactive mode, which would give you a lot more protection. So if you do use ESAT, I would recommend maybe checking out some of the other HIPS modes because the default mode does not seem to be particularly robust. So what you might want to do is enable learning mode for a few days, 
and then switch to interactive mode or enable policy based mode and set up some rules yourself. I'm sure other users have probably got templates for these. I would love it if there were some default rules already here that you could just enable. That would definitely be an improvement proposition for ESAT. But other than that, I guess that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's definitely a lot of fun doing these ransomware tasks. Once again, a big thank you to BZ Future for sponsoring this video. Please check them out if you want to buy ESAT or any other product really. And as I said, you'll be getting a free Windows 10 key. They've got a bit of a promo going. Use the link in the description or the note on the screen right now to let them know that you're coming from the PC Security channel. They've also got chat-based support, so you'll have no issues getting your license, getting it activated and getting it to work. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. There's a lot of awesome stuff coming your way. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.